listening to the Mark Bradford Alchemy for Life podcast. Everyone's a coach. Or are they? Well, hey there. Welcome back. It's your favorite coach. No. Coach, guide, mentor, teacher, instructor. Which one am I? You tell me. The reason I bring up all these synonyms for coach is that they're not synonyms for coach. They're all different. There's a big difference between a coach and a mentor or a guide or a teacher or an instructor. When the term life coach came into existence, it came into existence immediately with a whole bunch of baggage and a perception that was not positive. As a thinking, reasoning being, of course you would believe that life coach is something to be scrutinized, right? I mean, the term life coach basically suggests somebody who is a well, you know, a well-versed, wise, multifaceted, multi-discipline expert in not only how life works, but also how people work, also how the structure of the universe sort of works. I mean, obviously it's a very lofty title that also sounds silly at the same time. One of my first talks, I used an image of Yoda because when I said what life coaching was, I said it pulls in images of Yoda or or religious figures because those are the kind of people that, you know, Yoda lived for like 800 years. So, you know, you'd think he would he would know quite a bit. Add to that the fact that a lot of people's lives are, are rather unique. So to have this random person come into your life and say, oh, here's how you should be conducting your life. Well, what does that person know about you? Do they have shared experiences with you? Do they have an understanding. So the term life coach has always bothered me. And that's why I've never really gone with it. I do like personal coach better because it is a one-on-one -on -one thing with another person you are coaching them. But let's get to the word coach. To me, coach is an interactive connection. I mean, if you think of coach before all of this other stuff, all this esoteric, um, non-physical stuff, you think a coach is somebody out there on the field watching you. There's somebody watching you, making sure that you do something correctly. We all know that, you know, uh, a 48-year-old coach cannot compete with a 25-year-old kid who is out on the field, right? But he knows what to do. He knows your potential. He knows how to get the most out of this 25 year old kid. And I'm sorry if you're 25 and you don't expect, think of yourself as a kid, but you're a kid. So we know that a coach is sort of an interactive person focusing on a person, giving wisdom and experience and knowledge to the person to be their best at a certain thing. Okay, that sounds pretty good right? But if you open that all the way up to life, that's no, it's really hard for your brain to accept that. And it is, right? It is. Everyone who tries to tell you something in life, anyone, everyone who tries to advise you has to then back it up with saying, here's my experience, here's my system, here's this, here's that. It's hard to say, well, here's my system. Well, for most people it is, but let's leave me out of that for now. So now that we know what a coach is, this is what a coach isn't. I don't think a coach is somebody who works with you and kind of goes back and forth. How do I say this? I know, I won't. Let's use teacher. What's the difference between a coach and a teacher? A teacher tries to know what your potential is because they give you tests and things like that and they work with you. They try to improve how you are in something. But there's... Nobody says life teacher, but they do say math teacher or history teacher, right? So the expectation is then that this person is teaching you a particular subject. They're not going to say, you know, you're, you're doing pretty, you're doing really well in geometry, but you know, you need to spend more time with your girlfriend. <laughs> They're not going to do that. So a teacher helps you get better at a skill, right? So then what does an advisor do? An advisor is typically a person you come to see to get advice from. They don't typically work with you one-on-one -on -one constantly and are constantly following up with you in the way that we think a coach does, right? 
You say, well, I need to go see my financial advisor. You know, every so often I touch base with them, da 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 da. If there's something big, we sit down and he looks over all my stuff and then does that. Maybe you have someone in your life you consider to be a spiritual advisor. It's the same sort of thing, though. So then what's a mentor? So mentors typically are people that you work with. There's usually a fairly large age gap, at least in the beginning, there was. Usually mentors were, were older people who worked with younger kids to sort of keep them on the right track, just mentor them, right? To, to move them into a direction. Sounds a little life coachy, a little bit, right? Now mentors fairly common because you can connect up to people on even on LinkedIn, people that you don't really know very personally, but they can mentor you. They can kind of guide you. You know, you, you, you get out in the field and you're, you know, you're in the trenches doing your thing. And then you kind of see them and say, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm floundering on this or, hey, what do you think of that? And they can say, well, and in my 20 years of doing this in the finance sector, uh, you know, I always found this. So make sure that you're make sure that you're pointed in this direction. Oh, OK, great. Thank you. You know, it's kind of like seeing it's kind of like seeing the teacher who will show you the the answers in the answer book. They're, they kind of just will they'll just lay it out on the line for you. So now that I've given you these definitions, at least the, the definitions that I believe in, and hopefully they're connected to your definitions. I want to ask you, who actually are the coaches? And I ask this because I talk to so many coaches and my brain says they can't all be coaches. And when I read further about them or meet them or, or what have you, I find that they're not, at least in my humble opinion. And I apologize if that's offensive. If you call yourself a coach, and I'm suggesting you're not. I'm just not suggesting that you don't do what you say you do. I'm not suggesting that you're doing anything wrong. I am suggesting that the label you place on yourself, and we have a podcast specifically about labels, the label you're placing on yourself is incorrect. And I don't fault you for that because it has become the industry default label for people. If you're not using something that is very specific and esoteric, like I'm an engineer, I'm a this, I'm a that. People choose the label of coach. If they're helping people or guiding them or mentoring them or teaching them, then they call themselves a coach. And then they lose all meaning and then they blend in with a million other people. So if you are someone who's a coach, I would submit to you to consider perhaps that you're maybe you're a teacher Maybe you're a guide. Maybe you're an instructor. How does the perception of yourself change when you use those words? And if you're someone who's not a coach, but you've either engaged a coach or are thinking of engaging a coach of some form, because there's a million forms of them now, think about that. What are they actually doing with you and for you? Are they coaching you or are they teaching you a new skill or are they instructing you on how to do something that you're not doing very well. I know that sounds a little blurry, right? It's, it's a little blurry between instructing and coaching. But if I say I'm going to go to my instructor, you immediately think of someone who is very skilled in that skill. And it's almost like a classroom situation. I'll give you a perfect example of that. When I got my pilot's license, I didn't just go study and go for the test. I actually signed up for a class. It was a, it, probably took a good two months of prep work because I wanted to get it right. And the test isn't free. The gentleman conducting the class was actually fairly interactive. It was somebody that you could actually ask questions to uh, challenge things and so forth. He was definitely somebody who put a lot of effort into helping people to make sure that they got their license. But he wasn't a coach. He was an instructor. And when you think of an instructor teaching a whole bunch of people to be pilots, your level of belief into their skill level is much, much, much higher than if I said, oh, this person is a pilot coach. You, you, you would think, what, 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 do you, what, do you, what does that mean? Does he sit next to you and say, yay, yay, bank now? You know, <laughs> what, well, think about that. I'm going over my set limit, but I think I need to because I'm asking you these open-ended questions and I have a reason for doing that. 
it's because of my own belief in the word coach, and even using it for myself. Even though I do think what I do fits the description fairly well, I'm still not thrilled with the label. I don't think there's anything I can do about the rampant use of the word coach in across all industries, but at least I can get you to think about it. And maybe if you're somebody who calls yourself a coach, you may get a lot more clients or a lot more focus and clarity if you stop using that word. Check back with me to see if I stopped using that word too. Thank you for listening. I love your feedback as always. Keep it coming. I always appreciate if you like, share, subscribe, and all that nonsense. And if you don't, that's cool too. By now, my new novella, The Devils in the Details, has hit the shelves. If you like a smoldering quick read, then you may love reading The Devils in the Details.